everyone, happy Texture Tuesday and welcome to my brand new YouTube channel. I am Rob Say Jr., a children's book author and illustrator. Today, we are going to start with the very basics of my process on how I add textures from photos that I see on the streets or on my walks, uh, scraps of paper, paint, whatever it is, and place it into uh, my artwork using Photoshop. Adding texture throughout your illustration is a great way to add depth, color, compositional elements that ultimately will make you a better storyteller. In this video, we will create a simple illustration in layers to explain how to add textures to elements within a piece using the layer clipping mask function in Photoshop. So let's dive in and get drawn. Okay, so today we are gonna draw elephant playing basketball. I don't know why this, but I thought it would be a fun one to draw. Um, they need some missing sports right now, but the first thing we are going to do is set our simple sketch to a multiply layer and lock it so we can't paint over it, but we can also see through it because the most important thing that we do right now is make sure we have everything from the legs to the body, to the head, to the ears in separate layers. That is because it'll make it much easier in the process to add multiple textures or change textures along the way to make it as different and, and play with it and have as much flexibility as possible. So uh, I'm gonna speed up the video right now so we can go through this. I, just as a note, I use the path tool to render and paint and make my basic shapes. You don't have to, you can just use the brush tool. I just think it makes it much neater. It has a little bit more polish for me. I'm not <laughs> the neatest person in the world, but so this will speed up the process of me using the paths to uh, make my base layers. So now that we have our uh, layers set up and each of our um, limbs and heads and the ball, the floor, all our elements on separate layers, we want to start looking at textures and specifically what textures we want to use for our elephant. I have quite the array of textures as a catalog, but the most important thing here, whether they're painted or just photos, you want to use the, the highest resolution possible. So I highly recommend TIFFs or really high res JPEGs. The problem with JPEGs is that they degrade over time. So TIFFs is really the ultimate goal here. But here you can see I have painted ones, but I also love um, cement textures. Coming from New York, I just I'm obsessed with cement, but it's a really nice way to add some distressing. This is an, a cement texture. This is actually from a poly mailer, the inside um, made of recyclable materials. This is of a door that I found in San Francisco. So I really have a lot of fun collecting textures and making new textures. And this is actually from the back of a truck. This one is from an old fence that I found. And I think it just teaches us to keep our eyes open always that how we can improve our art and how we can always bring new elements into our art. And that's really why I love adding textures, specifically textures that I find. So what we're gonna do now is start taking these textures. I'm viewing these right now in a program called Adobe Bridge and bringing them into our Photoshop document. I just drag them in. You can also do this with just the regular Mac Finder tool or just your Windows folder tool. And how we add the textures is just simply going over and making sure it's right on top of the layer you want it to be. And you hold the option key and click the line in between those layers, as you can see. You can also right click the actual texture file um, and hit create clipping mask and then it'll take that shape. And what that does is that it restricts that texture directly to the layer below it, which is what that uh, little arrow pointing down to the left of the layer uh, panel signifies. And what's great about this now is that you can adjust this texture to whatever opacity you like. You can now bring it to other layers that are, match the same color and you can adjust them as you see fit. You can also add multiple layers of texture to each layer mask with ever, without ever worrying about losing the shape. You can also mess with the shapes underneath. A nice little feature about this is that you can make sure all your textures match 
and are seamless across shapes, especially here where the nose and the face, I wanna make sure that the textures match up where other places I might wanna have the textures be different. Another thing I like to play with is my layer modes. And here I can play with going from normal to multiply to overlay where it creates different effects all from one texture based off of the color I have below it. Um, I also don't even need to use the color below it if I keep my texture at like say a normal mode um, layer at 100%. So here I'm just making sure the textures go across all the same areas. I, I try to keep it consistent across colors or across the elephant. I wanna mimic its skin and its you know toughness, but also create a unique kind of look to this elephant. So I'm gonna start moving this across all the legs and make sure I get each leg with this same texture. So um, now I think I would be like a good time to look at maybe adding like another texture and showing how I can add uh, multiple textures, mo mostly because I think this is uh, lacking a little bit of the amount of texture I've actually wanted. So let's see, let's see what we can we can do here. I dropped in this uh, ink splatter. Actually, it's with a brayer and some uh, ink that I did on white, just specifically so I can use the multiply function to add a little bit more distress. And I laid this in between all of the original layer shapes that I created and the cement texture I previously used. And what's great about this is that you can just, once you have created the original clipping mask, you can put uh, any amount of textures in between the original one and the actual layer shape and it'll automatically create a clipping mask. See here, if I put it on top, it's outside of the clipping mask and I just have to either drag it underneath or click option, click on that line in between and it'll add it to the chain. So it's really a useful function and you can really build up as much as you want here um, to get the desired effect. And I, the part that I love about it most is like you'll see here, with this brayer texture, I'm using it to move around the texture to get what I'm trying to cause of shadows or show roundness here in the leg. And it allows me to really be very flexible, but also not have to paint as much, which, which, which saves me time and helps me create a much more unique style. <laughs> I like to think of it as spont spontaneous, but still like kind of thoughtful. And that really has allowed me to really grow my style, which and create not only a style that isn't, that's just limitless um, with unlimited possibilities for me. So now I'm looking to add um, a different texture for the jersey. And I have these pieces of paper that I've collected over the years. This is actually a, just a crumpled piece of red paper, which is nice. It'll help balance and create contrast between the cement texture that's you know a little bit flatter and more uh, grungy and here a, a very tactile texture and I'm always looking for that contrast um, between textures and although my style is very texture heavy an important thing with any style and any process is when you choose to do something and when you choose not to do something so I'm always being conscious of when I'm choosing not to be a texture. Uh, for instance, here, since my character is so textured, I will probably not do, uh, I'll probably keep that background white and avoid any texture just to help it pop and stand out more. So I'm gonna speed up the video a little bit so we can see how this turns out. I'm gonna add something that is recognizable, I think. And, and here we have a basketball floor and I always think of those really clean gym floors with the wood texture. So I really wanna emphasize that and I think it's okay to bring um, things that are constant to people into your texture. So wood floors and really help bring the whole concept of what you're trying to tell home. And again, here I drag in my texture and I option click 
to the layer I wanted to take its shape. And that's really, I, I think that looks really cool. I can play here with some of the way it looks. Um, I think the yellow is a little uh, overwhelming here and it takes away from what I'm trying to achieve of that hardwood floor look. So I think I'm just gonna keep it a normal layer and I might pull it back a little bit and change um, the layer color from yellow to a, a little bit closer color or just keep it as a normal layer. Great, and that's the whole concept here. And now I'm, I'm gonna speed up the video to show you how I just start adding a little bit more of shading, just slightly, and the rest of it's pretty much done. And, and let's finish this up and see how it turns out. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Be sure to like and subscribe below to get notifications and updates when new videos get posted every week. To see more of my work, you can follow me on Instagram at robsayart or visit my website at www.robsayart.com. See you next week and keep drawing.